Welcome back to P4. Today we're looking at 3D coordinates, unit 7.8. Hopefully a nice short video today as we've already looked at 3D vectors or vectors in three dimensions. Today we're looking at those coordinates and just looking at the distance between them. So the distance between two points in 3D would be the same as the modulus of that 3D vector. And to do this, we're simply going to be applying Pythagoras. Now, in three dimensions, you can think of it as a few different ways. Um, you can think of your standard X and Y, and then your Z axes going into your book or away from your book. And that's kind of, you know, the easiest way to kind of visualize it. So if my X axis and my Y axis was laying flat on my book. These are obviously at 90 degrees to each other here. Then the Z axis could be that axis coming either off the paper, straight up in the air or down into the book. It doesn't really matter. Okay, and then that's obviously gonna create a 90 degree angle with the Y axis but it will also create a 90 degree angle with the x-axis there. So there I've got my 90 degree angles with each of my kind of axes in total. So that's my x, y and z coordinates. And then I can pick a point on this coordinate, let's call it point P, and it's going to have coordinates x, y and z. Or z for some of you. Now, if I think about the distance that this point's going to make with the origin, you know, I'm thinking about this straight line here. And if I think about where this hits, you know, it's going to hit a some sort of coordinate within the X and Y axes. Let's do it like this. And I'm going to get something like this in total. Okay, and that's then my triangle my right angle triangle now this bottom side here can also be found in terms of pythagoras you know if i think of and i'll do this in red now it's going to create a right angle triangle within my x y um, plane so we've got pythagoras to find this bottom one and then essentially using this bottom one and this side one i can then find using pythagoras the distance from this point to my origin. Another way of just looking at this is if I put it inside a cube, I think I have mentioned kind of this before, but if I think of a, a cuboid, and if we want to find the diagonal between say this corner and this corner, which could be our origin and our point P, then we want the diagonal along the bottom. Yeah, which if this is X distance and this is Y distance, this would be the square root of X squared plus Y squared. And then we'll need this distance, which we're going to call Z or Z. So this diagonal from O to P is then going to be my x squared plus y squared. Now at the moment the square root did. So square that plus z squared and then of course square root overall. That's my idea behind Pythagoras. Yeah, so that's how we end up with this x squared plus y squared plus z squared or z squared. And square rooting will give me the distance from the origin to point P. And then if I want to apply this to the distance between two points, so let's call this P as our point one. And then Q maybe as our point two. Then Pythagoras then or the distance for this PQ will be the difference between the two squared for each of my x my y and my z because i want that distance between them to be squared 
really straightforward concept. Let's get in with a couple of examples and a couple of quick questions. So a very straightforward example, find the distance from the origin to this point. So the point is P, so OP is going to be 3 squared plus minus 1 squared plus 7 squared. Obviously I always put the negative number in a bracket here to remind myself in the calculator so I don't get any mistakes. And this will give me the square root of 59 or 7.7 .7 to one decimal place obviously depending on what the question will tell you second example here find the distance from a to b so a b is going to be now it doesn't actually matter which way around i do this so we have four minus six squared plus 5 minus minus 4 squared plus minus 9 minus 3 squared. So we got minus 2 squared, which is 4. Then we've got 9 squared, which is 81. And minus 12 squared, which is 144. And that gives me the square root of 2 to 9. Or again, if it give me to decimal places, we go 15.1 to one decimal point. Final example, and the kind of question you often do get within questions or parts. We've got A and B, we've got A, we've got B, but we've got this unknown K. And it tells me the overall distance is five. So this distance AB is going to be, now for this one, I would always recommend starting with the coordinate that has your unknown in it. I feel it just makes your life a little bit easier. So I'm going to use the coordinate for B. So I got 5 minus 3 squared plus 0 minus 4 squared plus K minus 9 squared. Now this is going to equal 5. So first thing I want to do is really square both sides so I've got my 5 minus 3 so let's write it like this 2 squared plus my minus 4 squared plus my k minus 9 squared so we have 4 plus 16 plus k minus 9 squared equals 25 so at the moment we've got k minus 9 squared equals 5 now, here I generally have two options in which way to solve. So option one would be expand my brackets. And solve this way. So k squared minus 18k plus 76 equals zero. And find my values for k this way. Um, and obviously you can use your calculator as well to help you out with that. So the alternative way was to go straight from here, square root both sides, and then add nine. So we've got nine plus or minus root five, which of course we could write as a decimal, depends on the question. Um, most of the time, these types of questions actually work out so you get a nice whole value. Since I made up the values within this question, it's obviously not quite worked out. But hopefully it's enough for you to get the, the gist of the question. Let's have a go at a few yourself, and as always, the answers will be at the end.